I like to paint over thrift store art, and this was just a printed panel at a thrift store. I did polyacrylic over it first to give the slick surface some tooth for me to paint on, and I drew a fox, feeling like the whole vibe was very foxy. I start with the eyes. I'm using just regular acrylic paints, um, not, not the craft bottle kind, but you know, the artist grade. So I put in the basic eye color and then do the little um, rays coming out from the center. I like to pay special attention to the eyes. All of my art is about emotion. And so a lot of emotion is shown in the eyes. So I do the color and then I did the, the rays coming out from the center and now I'm doing the black around the iris and kind of blending it a little bit. With acrylics, you have to blend when things are wet. So you work pretty quickly. And you blend just by taking your clean brush and going over the section that you wanna soften. And now I'm putting in the pupils. And getting ready to move on um, for the textured parts of this painting and my other paintings, I've been using sculptural acrylics. I'm using Gaffrey art material, super thick, gorgeous acrylic paints. You don't have to add modeling paste to it. It's already got it all, the modeling paste, the gloss, all of it mixed in. So I love it. Oh, I forgot I had to do the inside of the ears also. So this is um, the style that I came up with because I did not take oil painting classes and I used to do this style with oils. I would do the eyes and the ears and any possible flat areas first and then I would come in with the oil paints, thick oil paints with my um, palette knives. So it's kind of a goal of mine to take a real oil painting class one day where I haven't just taught myself a method. And I'm just, I did the white paint for the ears and I'm coming in with some black to add some wispy shadows that are hair-like. There I am showing the Gaffrey paints, Gaffrey art material. The way that they package it in these thick plastic, um, I don't know, it's almost like piping bags. You can put it directly onto your painting where you need it. So I like to take advantage of that and then you're not wasting any paint on your palette. You can glaze a color over and I'm doing a little bit of the shadow there and then I start texturing the fur with my palette knife. So that is the chest area. Then I'm pulling that shadow downwards and come in for the next section. <clears throat> when I'm working with paintings from the thrift store, the paintings set the vibe. They set the color tones and like the emotions that I wanna convey. And it's a fun challenge to try to work with the composition of the painting, but still be able to put at least one of my animals into the painting, and I do them large. I don't do the smaller um, figures like some artists do working with thrift store art. I love the challenge. I love that I am recycling while making my art. Um, it, it gives me a lot of inspiration for creativity just because of what the different backgrounds are. So I like to start with the white when I'm doing these textured paintings. Um, when I'm adding the texture, if I can, I start with white because white will catch other colors if they're there. Like I'm gonna be using red for the fur of the fox. And if I had done the red before the white, then when I do the texturing, I would have pink coming into the white sections, the red plus the white, so I didn't want that. Here I decided to make the nose area come out 
because I can with this paint. This paint doesn't crack. Um, you can go super thick with it. So I came out with the nose and I decided just to glaze over the actual nose area with black. You'll see I'm going to swipe, put some black onto my palette knife and I'll swipe over where the nose is. And that's a trick that you learn to use using these paints that you can swipe colors over a base color. You can only mess with this paint so much before you make a mess of it. So you have to wait and let it dry if you want to go back and touch up some colors or add more shadows. There I'm carving the nostrils into the little nose and the fox is really starting to take shape. Um, I had some red that was leftover paint. I think, I don't remember what color it was to start with. I think it was white and I added red to it. So it was a little too pink and there I'm adding some yellow to make it a little more orangey. And I ended up thinking that all of these colors were too pure to go with the background. The background has a goldish brownish sort of overall glaze to it. So after the painting dries, I'm going to go through and do that. But here I'm adding my, my red color. Like I said, it was left over from another painting. And so I really don't like to waste the paint if I can change what's left over into a color that I can use. I do that. Also keep um, small small bases for art close by and we'll turn the leftovers into flowers and such. Here I'm applying the paint and I have to be more careful where it comes around the flat areas, slowing down, going in with my smaller palette knife and then a lot of times I'll take a brush and flatten the areas like the transition areas between texture and flat and there um, I like to start on the outer edges with texturing and work my way in that way you know the next layer that I'm doing is overlapping the textures that I just did and you want to just pull your palette knife in the direction that the fur grows in that section so I don't remember why I didn't do the rest of the nose area maybe I wanted to bring it Thicker. I think that was the plan. Uh, part of my style is I do blush on my animals, like in a, a stylized circle. So that's what I was trying to figure out how to do there, and it just wasn't working right. <clears throat> there. Yeah, I did want to do a more textured, a lifted nose area. I tell you, this paint is fabulous. You have got to try it. I tried all the modeling pastes also, and I have gone with this paint because Gaffrey art material is so high quality. You can get it super, super thick. It holds its shape. It only shrinks a little bit when it dries. So like these paintings, they if I put a fan on it, it's going to be pretty dry by the morning. It might still be squishy inside, but it'll be nice and thick enough or dry enough that I can paint on the outer, the outside of it again. So that's what I did after I got all this base layer done. I put it under a fan and let it start drying. Around about this stage is when I'm trying to decide, is this fox a boy or a girl? And I was starting to get fantastic Mr. Fox vibes. No. And he didn't remind me of Mr. Fox, but he reminded me of his son. So I decided that he was going to be his son, Ash. I am adding whiskers here, the ends of guitar, old guitar strings. Um, my dad has a music school and my daughter works there. So when she restrings instruments, she brings me the old strings home and I use them in all sorts of my art. And it's, it's a fun 
a little extra part. Okay, so after this point, I put it under a fan to dry. I'm still fig finishing up a few details. And then I looked up Ash, Ashton Fox, so I could get a better view of what he looks like. This little fox just kind of has that disgruntled vibe that Ash has in Fantastic Mr. Fox. So I put it under the fan. And then the next day I came back to do more work to it. And still texturing there, a few more details. There he 